Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial about inverse rendering using Mitsuba 3. My name is Merlin Nimier David and I'm one of the authors of the Mitsuba renderer. This video is part of a series of tutorials. In the previous tutorial, we used gradient based optimization to recover the color of a wall from a reference image. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend checking it out first since we'll be using a lot of the same ideas. The link is in the description below. This tutorial is about caustic design. So, Assume that we have a light source, a slab of glass, and a wall. What we are trying to do here is to automatically optimize the surface of the glass pane to redirect the light rays until they project a desired shape or image. To achieve this, we'll use differentiable rendering, and in particular the automatic differentiation features of Mitsuba 3. We'll see how to create some of the scene elements on the fly, for example the emitter, directly from Python. The full code for this tutorial is available as a Jupyter notebook that you can run locally and the link is in the description. All right, so let's get started. Like in the previous tutorials, we import Mitsuba 3 and set an appropriate variant. Here, we've chosen the CUDA backend with automatic differentiation. In this cell, we've gathered some of the parameters we'll be using later on, such as the rendering resolution, the sample count, the number of optimization iterations, and so on. We've also specified the path to the target image. That's the image we'll try to reproduce as a caustic. In this case, it's a crop of the painting Un dimanche après-midi à l'île de la Grande Jatte by Georges Seurat. Next, we'll create the elements of the scene one by one, directly from Python. The scene will essentially be like this, except without the surrounding room, uh, because it doesn't influence the result. There is a directional light source on the left, which shines light through the slab of glass. The exit surface of this glass pane is what we will be optimizing. On the right, the refracted light is received on a diffuse flat wall, which is what the camera will be directly observing. Let's look at the surface of this glass pane. In this application, it makes sense to start with a flat surface and slowly displace each vertex along the normal of the plane, to reflect the refraction angle, and so in effect redirect light rays hitting this region. The important point is that instead of optimizing unconstrained 3D vertex positions, we can optimize a scalar height field instead because the height field texture will be applied as a displacement onto a triangle mesh, we just have to make sure that the mesh itself has enough resolution. If you go check out the full notebook in the documentation, you'll see code to create this tessellated mesh on the fly as a function of the desired resolution. Next up, the emitter. Because the image we're trying to reproduce has color, we'll create a color light source with red, green, and blue regions arranged in a buyer pattern. The optimization will then be responsible for mixing these primary colors together to create the correct color at each point. We achieve this using textured emission values. To make the optimization a bit easier, we'll use a directional area light, meaning that it only emits light in one direction. To render this scene efficiently, we use a particle tracer integrator rather than a path tracer, meaning that the rays will start from light source rather than from the camera. And now we can start putting the scene together. Because we have a few elements that were created right here in Python, we will not be using the usual XML-based Mitsuba scene format. Instead, we define the scene dynamically using Python dictionaries. The two representations are equivalent though, and you can see here that we specify the plugin types, their properties, and so on. Here we declare the rest of the scene's content, including the BSDFs, the diffuse wall, the glass slab, and so on. Finally, we load the scene using the loadDict function. The next step is to create the height map that we will be optimizing. It's a single channel bitmap texture initialized to zero. You can see that we've used the loadDict function again to create the texture plugin. But what's interesting here is that we've instantiated this object completely outside of the scene. It kind of stands on its own. We use mi to traverse directly on the texture to enumerate the variables that can be optimized within and we retain just the texture values. The optimizer, in this case Adam, will be optimizing those values directly, and we call them latent variables, because they have an effect on the scene, but they are not directly observed. Now it's time to create the connection between the height map and the actual scene that will be rendered. At every iteration of the optimization, we'll be calling this apply displacement function. Its role is to ensure that the current values in the height map are applied to the glass surface, and importantly, that this relationship is captured within the automatic differentiation graph. We made a copy of the initial position and normals. 
So when this function is called, it first ensures that the displacements are reasonably small, and then offsets the surface vertices along the normal by the value of the height map texture. We're almost ready to start the optimization. In terms of objective function, we've chosen a scale-independent L2 loss. What I mean by scale-independent is that the average brightness is divided out. And this is just to make sure that we don't penalize if the light source happens to be brighter or dimmer than the target image overall. Alternatively, we could also optimize for the brightness of the emitter. Now we finally made it to the optimization loop. As I mentioned before, as a start of each iteration, we need to update the surfaces vertices from the height map. Then we perform a differentiable rendering of the scene and compare it to the reference image via the loss function. Once this is done, we can backpropagate from the loss value through the rendered image, through the integrator, and all the way back to the height map values. Then we take a gradient descent step. We've also added a couple of tricks that help converge to a better result. First, we use a classic course to find scheme. At a few points during the optimization, we double the resolution of the height map. That means we start with relatively few degrees of freedom and increase the number of optimization variables progressively. Second, you can see at the bottom here that at 70% and 90% of the optimization, we double the sample count and have the learning rate. This also helps achieve high quality results without spending too much time making high quality renderings in earlier iterations. And the optimization is already done. Let's show the resulting caustic image. It looks good. We managed to obtain a surprisingly close match. Now that we have this optimized height map, we could use it in any context we like, maybe even 3D printed. In this case, I'm showing the projected caustic as the optimized lens with closer to the emitter and back. This was just a quick overview of this application, so please make sure to check out the full notebook in the Mitsuba 3 documentation, as well as our other video tutorials. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!